Alrighty then, good afternoon there everybody, uh, Silver Dragon here, uh, coming at you with a uh, tutorial for uh, Masterwork Dwarf Fortress, a uh, little basic uh, military tutorial. Now, I've had many problems with the military in Dwarf Fortress, it's like you've, you've played it, you, most of you probably played it, you've gone through it, you know, you've gotten yourself a sustained fort and all that, and then you start working at the military and you're like, oh god, this thing is its whole own beast. The military is just such a colossal pain in the ass at times that it's so difficult to figure out, you know, how to get a proper working sustained military. So I went and spent a good like eight hour plus uh, specifically uh, streaming just to get a, uh, you know, a good idea of what does it take? What is the best, most efficient ways to properly acquire and train a good uh, military in Dwarf Fortress. So that's basically what I did, and that's what today's about. So hopefully I can get this done in uh, one go and see what happens for that. Uh, so thank you for watching and uh, enjoy. Alright, let's pan on over here. There we go. And I should unmute this thing now. Uh, there we go. Perfect. Alright. So... For the purposes of this video, I have uh, cheated a little bit. This is just a really, really basic embark, uh, like with everything ready to go. I already have all the armor, weapons, and all that kind of stuff. But generally speaking, that's all extra stuff you do in the background anyway. I'm just going to be going over the property, uh, the proper ways to equip them and get them working and doing their thing and so on and so forth. So, so yeah, that's uh, that's a little bit on that end. Uh, anyway, let me pull this back up so I can see what I'm doing for that. Okay, now, anywho, there is a, a lovely military flowchart that somebody made uh, that I will be posting up in the description later. You may wish to check it out. It's something that could really help you significantly in uh, setting up a working military and getting them all, you know, running around, working properly and all that. Anyway, this is only really a two, well, three, I'll say three-leveled fortress because we have a couple different things here. But it's fairly fairly basic. There's nothing too shiny to this place. You can see there's no no farms or nothing here. So this is definitely not a sustained fortress. I'm basically living on borrowed time here with about uh, two two k uh, rum and oh, does this thing not was that thing not constructed? No, oh, it looks like they had issues constructing that. Anyway, I'll be getting to that bit later. Anywho, it's time to set up our first little military squad. So generally, at this point, you would have yourself a, a sustained fortress. You'd have produced some uh, armor and weapons for your guys to equip. And now it's the time to, you know, get them and equip them. So we'll open up the military screen with M. And we get this lovely uh, menu here where it's like, wait, what? So, of course, the top left corner, we have our military commander. This will be our main guy. He is going to be all fancy and whatnot and want his own room and want all this other stuff in it and so on and so forth. So, I'll have to provide that for him later. Uh, but I'm just going to create that squad. Now, we have a couple of... Uh, now, you can see here we have a couple of different uh, uniforms to select from. Now, actually, it's a good thing that before I do select this guy, I should probably create the uniform for him so that he will be able to equip that automatically to him and his uh, crew in the squad. So we're going to do that as our first little bit here. Uh, we also have the positions for them, which is just telling them you know, where they are in the squad. Uh, alerts, which shows you know any inactive, active training. You can add alerts and uh, set civilian uh, bunkering areas and so on and so forth. Use that to basically keep all... Well, when, you, when the armies come and invade you, you can go to the alert screen, set up a uh, burrow, and have them all run away going, Oh, God, flee to the fortress, flee to the fortress, and all that kind of thing. Uh, equipment would be if you want to set up specific equipment for them, uniforms, yada yada, we're going to be covering that in a second, supplies, what kind of supplies they're carrying, uh, ammunition on the right side here, we have how much ammo they're going to, you know, collect and use, and then the schedule. Anyway, let's go on to uniforms, so I hit N for uniforms. I'm going to hit, uh, I already have two set down here, set up down here for different squads, but I will adding, add on some new ones. Now we have a couple default ones you would get, leather armor, metal armor. And then Archer. Uh, these are all customizable ones. They're just you can just go with the basic if you if you absolutely want, or you can do uh, what I'm doing and make your own uniforms. So I'm gonna hit C, add a new uniform, uh, capital N to name it. I'm gonna call this one. I was called the Iron Sword. Apparently I can't type this morning. All right, now at this point it's best to hit the caps locks button. 
just because a lot of the uh, but a lot of the ones you're going to be doing now are all capitals. So we're going to start off with armor. So A. Now for our iron uh, for our iron sword guys, we're going to want. Uh, at least uh, one piece of each. I do a little bit of a customized thing where I have one breastplate and one male shirt uh, for the uh, main chest area. For the leggings, I just have greaves. For the helm, I have a... I think it's, what is it? Iron, iron helm and a male hood. So just the only parts where I have two pieces are the head area and the chest area. Everything else is just one piece. For handwear, we want gauntlets. For boots, we want, well, boots. For shield, it is a melee squad, so I do want to have shields. I have chosen round shields as my main type of shield. And then for weapons, we want long swords, which is what I've chosen to be their main weapon. Now we want to go uh, material, which is capital M. And, of course, the A-L-H... G, B, S, and W to cycle between the various kinds here. You can kind of get the general just of that. You can also do color, but I don't I don't bother with color. I never I never mess with color. Anyway, you go into material now and go down. And since all of the uh, armor I have brought with me, made sure I had, uh, is iron, which you could also get, of course, by just making it, uh, smelting it, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, speaking of which, in order to actually create a set of uh, armor, not to act not including the uh, long sword, it's about 18 iron bars uh, per set, and that's just for the base of everything. You know, one one of everything. A little bit more if you go for my setup here, or change it up, because I could actually add more armor to this, but I choose just to go with what I got. But anyway, uh, going down to each, swapping it to the right, and choosing iron. Making sure that they are picking the right kind that I want them to. This is to make sure, partially to make sure that they don't have any confusion when it comes to actually uh, getting their stuff. There tends to be a lot of confusion at times with these dwarves about what they're doing, what they're supposed to pick up, and all that. And I've had I've had dwarves try and attack enemies uh, with. Uh, well, actually, I should mention that it was the reason why I got really, really, really irritated with the. Uh, with the military system and my guys not properly equipping their stuff came from I had a guy that I told to equip his armor and go fight some metal wraiths and he went down there full armor iron boots ironed up iron shield but no weapon to say the least he didn't last that long even though he was trying to Captain America that with his shield uh, he didn't last that long so yeah that was unfortunate now, once you've created your uniforms out of whatever you happen to have, if you had a bunch of gold breastplates, you know, you get assigned as gold breastplates, whatever, whatever you happen to be using for your armor and weapon, uh, make sure to hit, uh, we'll turn off the cap lock at this point, hit M, so that it goes from uh, partial matches to exact matches, that way your dwarves will go and pick up exactly this, and they won't screw around and pick up like a, a bismuth bronze longsword or pants or anything like that, they'll go specifically for this, and to replace their overclothing, are That way they will replace the main clothing they have on with this armor, thus being fully equipped with all this stuff here. Now that we have our sword, our iron sword group here, uh, we're going to exit out of that, that is now saved, so we're going to go back into the military screen, uh, we're going to create a squad with the military commander, the iron sword uniform. And we're going to go select the uh, sword commander. It is always good to have your guys named for this. And actually, I should probably look at that. It is useful. Oh, yeah. Crap. Are you going to cause me problems now with that? Yeah, you're probably going to cause me problems. No, actually, it wasn't going to, surprisingly. Usually, when it comes to the therapist, if you close the game and then go back into the game and try and reload the dwarves, it causes all kinds of havoc with it. Uh, anyway... Uh, for Master Work Dwarf Fortress, of course, we have the new dual, uh, labors, roles, and social screen here. But I mostly want the military screen. Now, it helps if you have dwarves that are obviously skilled at whatever you're assigning them to. But also, it helps if you look over to the uh, strength, agility, toughness, and endurance. And make sure that they don't have any really, really low values in this. You want to have pretty decent values. Because this one right here is a little bit low. He has He's a hammer dwarf. He has only 28 strength, so he's average strength for a dwarf. Not that great. Uh, down here, my swords guys. We have one guy that has very, very poor agility, so that's not going to be too good for them. But luckily, they're not the ones going to be going in that. <laughs> the little special surprise room later. So that should be fine with that. So you really want to make sure you have really good skills for these guys, if you can. 
but you don't have to necessarily because that can be uh, fixed later as we do have things for that now all right now let me go to their equipment and make sure that they have everything equipped properly yep they have all have their little bits and pieces equipped properly all right now the first thing I'll now that we have them equipped here with everything they need the first thing I like to do is make sure that they actually equip everything properly and they're called the unholy lances lovely so I hit S in order to go to the uh, squad screen and then A to select them which is those guys have them move with M I can also hit K and have them attack and I'm just gonna have them move down here so they're gonna go grab all their armor and weapons now I'm gonna unpause it uh, they will grab everything they need also yes I almost forgot I completely forgot a very important thing you wanna always make sure you guys have in abundance are backpacks and water flasks because they'll take they'll use those backpacks to quickly equip a lot of food and drink so that they don't have to keep running back and forth in order to you know when they need to drink something oh so they're already fighting something swords dwarf is apparently fighting a nymph gouges the nymphs uh, left eye with his left hand tearing it apart looks like he's still fighting it I'll have them come over here because we have some unfortunate nymph infestations right now so I'm gonna have my guys come out here and help him fight this thing because he's not armored up right now so he has no no weapons or armor right now so hopefully these guys get out here really quickly and help him out we're taking a real long time about it there we go Okay, whoa, whoa, boys, whoa, 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 stand down, people, stand down. All right, let's have them move back down here. Hopefully, they will without any problems. Now, obviously, having, having, you know, oh shit. Oh well, they got her. They got her. Finished her off really quickly. So yeah, having enemies around is kind of a counter deterrent to setting up this stuff. So you might want to. You know, close out the fortress or something there initially just to give them, let them get in here and get the stings done properly. Now he's going to go down there, he's going to collect some food and water, and he's going to come over here. Of which that's customizable, you can go in and hit supplies, and you can tell them, uh, do I want you to carry any drinks, do I want you to carry any food or not. You can tell them not to carry anything if you absolutely want to here, which is useful if you don't have any backpacks uh, as of yet. Uh, but anyway, let's take a look now and see if they've properly equipped all their stuff. So we'll go, we'll hit V, hover over our guys here and go inventory with I. They have the round shield, the long sword, uh, the male shirt, he has a uh, water skin. His male hood, his breastplate, his helm. He does have his right boot, uh, right boot, right boot and left boot, right and left gauntlets, and his greaves. I should mention that as well, if you are going to embark with armor, make sure that you do have two of each gauntlet and boot. Which is, you know, the arm slash hand item and the uh, foot and the, well, boots, they're boots, it's self-explanatory. Uh, because they do need to have one on each foot. Alright, but anyway, they have appeared to collect everything properly. This guy has. It's good. He's not missing a sword. Not missing a sword. Okay, so they've all properly equipped all of their armor. Without hassles, without any issues. Uh, so we will get them starting to train here. So we have a little barracks set up here already over here for them So we're gonna have them sleep here. Oh, and I should say well, that's all the scheduling so I'll do that in a second uh, They're going to be training here Over in this little room and this is going to be where they store their squad and individual equipment Now the next step the next step once you've made sure that they have let me set them up remove them from the uh order here so back to the uh, squad screen and remove the order with O alright so next th next step is to set up a schedule for these guys generally when you have a military you want to have them training 24 7 you can leave like one or two off the schedule just so that they can relax a bit but generally you want to have them all 24 7 so we're gonna hit go back to the military screen here hit S for schedule and here we have the schedule for the active training you can see at the very top here this is the alert that you have to activate for them to do this schedule. It is the active training one. Uh, we have the months of the year on the left side here. Uh, the various uh, types of training they're doing, uh, whether or not they're sleeping in a room or a barracks at will, uh, if they're inactive, if they're whether or not they're going to be uniformed or not. 
So we're going to go at the very top here. I'm just going to hit X to cancel the order and O to do a new order. So we're going to want them to train. Of course, we have a couple different options here. You can see there was defend burrows. If you want them on a different alert to go straight to an area and defend it, this is what you use to do that. If you want them to patrol a spe uh, specific route you've set up and go back and forth along that, this you would use that one to station in an area. It's basically the same thing as uh, burrowing. Really, just station over here and defend it. Uh, train is the one we're doing, which is the final one. So we're going to select all four of our guys. And uh, on the bottom left here, we have a sold minimum of soldiers. You want to always want to make sure that is not greater than the amount of soldiers you have. Uh, so I'd set it for four for now, just to have them all training at the same time. If I wanted to have one relax while the rest train, I could reduce it down to three. But I'm going to set the minimum to four for now. Shift Enter to confirm. And then we're going to have them uh, hit S in order to have them sleep in barracks at need only. And when they're inactive, they're going to stay uniformed. So we're going to copy that and paste it all along here. And the reason they're staying uniformed is to stop any armor conf conflicts where they won't, you know, properly pick up their armor. Okay. Now that they're scheduled to train 24-7, we need to activate that schedule. So military alerts down to active training over to the right and enable that and they will now go and uh, start that uh, start doing that so we'll give them a minute here so that they're chilling right now there we go let's go check him out hit G for general he's going to individual combat drill good 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 so they're all going in here now to do a little individual combat drill where they're gonna be waiting for the fighting demonstration they're gonna start fighting like this and this is how they gain skills over time uh, now let me quickly set up my other squad by going now. If you want to set up another squad, obviously you can't do it from the military screen here because there's no option. Uh, you have to first go to the noble screen with N, go on down to sergeant, and assign a new sergeant to run the second platoon. Now where's my hammer commander? Ah, hammer lord's leader. And we will also assign the ranged command, which is we're going to be getting to later. It's a whole nother beast. Ranged to combat, or ranged uh, dwarves are a whole nother headache to have to deal with. So back down to here. Uh, we're going to create a squad. I've already got their, uh, already got their, what the hell is it called? Their outfit already preset up here with this, so there's no issues, no problems to have to deal with that. They're already ready to go. I will assign the, uh, assign the hammer dwarves to this. There we go. So I have four of each, and again, I would have them set to training and whatnot, but I'm going to have them specifically do something a little different after we train up here a bit. Now, before I'd mentioned that if your guys happen to have weak skills to begin with, uh, it's not too much of a problem to begin to at the uh, near the end, I should say, because you can go to these uh, weight benches right here now, which they used to take a resource in order to run this reaction, but it doesn't anymore. You can have a dwarf uh, train on it or work out, and uh, he will train the uh, strength, agility, toughness, spiritual, and kinetic sense. Uh, even legendary athletes uh, still gain attributes from this, so it's a good way to compensate if they happen to have low uh, low stats in those down the road. So you can just have them stop uh, working in the training and just have them constantly work out on those, and they would eventually buff up their abilities with that. Now this is the most basic form of military training other than just sending them out to slaughter things is to have them just go down here like this and train 24 7 they'll do individual combat drills wrestling demonstrations and all that and they'll slowly generally raise up their skills and, but that you know that takes a while that takes a while and you know we're 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 busy people we have uh, we have time schedules to keep and whatnot so there is a easier, faster, albeit a little bit uh, debatable in its uh, cheatiness, as it were, uh, way to train these guys a lot faster, which I am going to be using the uh, Hammer Dwarf Squad for. So let me first create a burrow with W, add a new burrow, burrow 1, I'm going to do it right here, create a little burrow in this area here. Now what these are, are basically upright spike traps which you can find in B, uh, capital T, and uh, capital S, Upright Spike Traps. And uh, these are built with uh, wooden training spears only. So you would build this in a corner here, hit Shift-Enter to select all. 
so that we make sure there's 10 in every single one. Uh, and then we'd hit done in order to complete that. Now you don't have to have 10 spears in every single trap, but that does increase the amount of uh, speed that they'll train. Uh, so it rapidly increases the rate of that. All right. Well, we're while we're setting this up here, let's uh, let's have our hammer dwarves, the uh, masked lies, or as a master marked lies, they're called. Uh, we're gonna have them station up now over here. Grab their gear. Get ready. Uh, now this is something that you need to make sure that they have all of their armor and equip it properly. If they don't, they are going to get hurt. So this is this is something that is a, both a good thing and also a good reason to have a hospital nearby, which I actually don't have this time. So I'm just going to have to hope and pray that they don't actually get injured. So once you've built these upright spike traps in a room, you want to have a door to you know make sure nothing really comes in too often. But don't seal it. Because if you seal it and one of them gets injured, they're going to try and get out. And if they can't get out, they're basically going to get skewered to death. Uh, then you're going to want to link those upright spike traps to a lever. And we will initiate that process in a second once these guys get all set up here. Who's fighting? Oh, great. Another nymph again. Now, I'm going to go down here quickly. Let me create a... Uh, oops. Fooling around here. Create a quick... Uh, here we go. Pen pasture area. Just because I really don't want this, uh, where's that? This drake anywhere near the uh, top uh, surface area. Because if that drake decides to uh, shoot off a, a bit of fire, my entire upper area is going to burn. Alright, let me link this to the other, other fun bit where we're doing later. Do I not have enough mechanisms? Yeah, I'll have to. Work, build more mechanisms, damn you! Alright, so slowly getting that done. Again, I'm about to have my hammers come out here and assist in killing this damn nymph, which is distracting this guy. So now that they have all their weapons, they should get out here quickly and help him take down that nymph so he can go level or go armor up. Quickly, chase her! Chase her into the traps, you fool. Alright, they're going to go over there to assist quickly. There we go. They'll have her dead in no time now. Much better. Now, dudes, get yourselves back here and get armored up properly. So yeah, again, having enemies in the area makes it a little difficult to properly get this done. Uh, likewise, though, they will be sleeping here and they will be storing their equipment here. So let's go. There we go. The only difference is they're going to have a slightly different method of training. Oh, you're freaking kidding me. Oh, it's a swords dwarf sparring. Okay, this is where they start to train their skills. So they'll start to dodge each other and they'll see that it'll be like, you know, the reverse edge of his iron long sword lightly tapping the target as he slashes him in the right foot and so on. So he lightly taps so as not to kill them. Let's just say in the early days, dwarves used to, there used to be training accidents because they didn't hold back when they were training. So if you had more than, an, uh, than a wooden long sword while you were training, they were going to be in trouble. Anyway, all right, let's take a look at these guys. Inventory. He has all of his armor. He has his war hammer. He does have a shield. Okay. Likewise, fully armored, fully armored, fully... Who the hell are you? Why are you here? Get out! Okay, I see he's gonna go, he's going to equip his, uh, let's see here. That's the range leader. Where is, let's see, H, it's H1 we're missing right now. So Hammer Dwarf 1 is currently missing. Where the heck did he go? Oh well, I'll just have to hope he arms up properly. Actually, I'll probably look him up here. It's not like I have a long list of dwarves. Storing item in a stockpile. So there he is right there. Okay, so he's going to equip stuff everything right now. Picking up his equipment. I guess he's going out to the... Uh, weird, he must not have hauled out the stuff enough. Or hauled it all from the caravan. I don't know why he's having... Oh, now he's sleeping. Really? Really, dwarf? Really? Really? Well, fine, so be it. 
Anyway, we got to go into scheduling for these guys now. So military scheduling. Now we're gonna do something a little bit different for these guys. So oh, nope. I like to cancel the orders to make sure for the to begin with. Now I want them to defend Burrow One. So I'll hit enter on Burrow One. Uh, it's gonna be a minimum of four of them, and they're going to do it 24/7. They're only gonna sleep in their barracks as needed. All right. Now, military, alert, put them on active training, and they'll go and defend Burrow 1. As they quickly re-equip all their stuff, and go on over there. Obviously, the other two are sleeping now, so it's going to take them a minute to wake up and actually get in there. Anyway, now the next thing is, you're going to want to go to the lever that you linked all those to, have them pull the lever, and put it on repeat. And then let that go. Now, as you can see, it's going to start going like this. Up, it's going to start uh, retracting and extending the spikes. Do we only have one guy in there now? No, so we have the two of them in here. So you can see right now they are a ta they are a talented hammer dwarf, competent shield user, uh, skilled fighter. They were not any had any fighting or dodging skills like two seconds ago. But anyway, let's just say here. So you know. Nothing above 7 right now. All these skills, nothing really above 7. So let's let this run for a good, you know, a good 30 seconds or two. Or so, give or take. And then he's going to join in the madness. He's going to hop in there. One's going to hop out and go sleep, I guess. And they'll keep popping in here from time to time. Oh, there goes that guy. Yeah, this is why this is actually considered to be... Although a really, really easy way for them to gain the skills, a very cheaty way to level the skills. Because literally, it's been like, what, less than a minute now? And let's go take a look at one of these guys. He's a level 15 Grandmaster Hammer Dwarf, a level 13 Shield User, a level 5 Armor User, a level 15 plus uh, le Legendary uh, Fighter, and a uh, competent Dodger still. So within like... 30 40 seconds we've already have a legendary fighter and uh, what is going to be really quickly a legendary a hammer dwarf aka a hammer lord as their icons change to show that so yeah this is a very if you're in a hurry if you're if you have like the enemies are hammering on your walls and you know like let us in to drink dwarven blood and stuff along those lines uh, this is the way to quickly train up an effective melee military I could send these guys out right now and they would slaughter most armies. Uh, although they are only equipped with iron, so obviously they have, you know, they're not the strongest thing in the world, but this is the quick and easy way to get a uh, melee military up and running, uh, fully leveled. Uh, this, if you do it the, the actual, you know, the way we're generally supposed to do it in a way, I guess you could say, uh, then it would take them about, God, combination of training and actual fighting would bring them up to legendary in about two years I would say maybe less depending on the fighting now now that we've uh, showed off with that a bit let's uh, let's have him stop with that now there we go no more pulling lever all right so I'll just let them chill in there for now so we'll start working on the ranged military here now. Hopefully these guys will get the heck out of here, though, as they're not supposed to be in here. Or be sleeping in there. But hopefully that'll fix itself once I actually assign the squad. So anyway, we're going to start with our ranged squad. Now, ranged squads are their own little beasts. Uh, they have their own problems. Uh, I've already got their uh, uniform set up for that, luckily, crossbow. Which is just simply the same thing as the uh, melee dwarves, except they have a... Iron crossbow is their weapon and no shield. Also, I gave them cloaks. So that they could, you know, have that. Because I felt like it. So, ranged... Oh, wait, what am I doing? No, ranged... No! 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 Bad. Evil. Bad. Ranged leader is the leader. Don't you dare replace him. Alright, so, ranged three. Now, there's a couple different ways to train your ranged dwarves. Uh, number one, make them hunters. Make them hunters, let them go out, let them do their thing, uh, let them go crazy with it, and they will raise their skills with that as well as their hunting. Also, a good way to get yourself a free 
crossbow and some arrows in the beginning is if you actually make hunting the uh, dwarf's highest skill when you are bringing them into the embark. That is, make it level six and no six and nothing else level six. Uh, then he will should bring a uh, crossbow and some bolts with him automatically, uh, thereby saving you the problem. Now, if you happen to have different types of weapons, different you know sets like, and you have to want to combine them into a uniform, you can actually go into your equip military equipment and have them specifically equip a uh, exact like go in and equip a specific weapon to that guy, and that will solve that problem. Like if you have a blood steel longsword or something you wanted to wanted your commander to equip. You can just remove the long iron long sword and set that as a specific weapon to equip, and he will do that. Anyway, uh, the crossbow doesn't necessarily matter with uh, with the damage for that. So if it's an iron crossbow, it's a wooden crossbow. It doesn't really matter as much. All it really matters with is when they're running over there trying to bash their heads in with it uh, in order to do damage that way, which they tend to do when they run out of ammunition. Uh, but now, obviously, there are problems with uh, having them equip proper ammunition and actually, you know, filling their quivers and such. Now, they're very, very weird how the ranged military works in training. It's definitely odd, to say the least. Okay, I'm going to forbid passage in here now. Alright. So, I'm going to set them up here quickly and have them uh, go and grab their equipment. Now, once you have them uh, have their... Blah. Blah. Once you have their actual uniform set up, you know, for the leather armor, I also gave them a leather armor and leather cloak instead of padded armor. Uh, you want to go into their ammunition and set up exactly what ammunition you want them to have. Uh, hunters, I'm going to leave that as is. It doesn't really matter. So we go down to these guys. Now, I would just immediately just delete most of this stuff. 250 bolts is good. Now, generally... Even on the uh, flow chart, it'll say, oh, you want to set up uh, ammunition for combat and say for your wooden arrow or for, uh, for your steel arrows or co copper arrows or whatever. And you want to have the separate wooden arrows for your training. If you do that, they will not fill their quivers properly. They'll fill it with combat ammo, they'll go out, they'll use it, like half of it, they'll come back and they will refuse to replace those arrows with training arrows. So the way I go about uh, fixing this is I just want them to equip 20, 250 bolts for combat and training. I take my iron bolts, you know, iron, copper, whatever. Or I, I brought a thousand copper bolts with me. And I store them away in a separate room and lock the door. That way they cannot get to the uh, arrows for combat. So when you send them out to, co to actually fight... They're going to take a few wooden arrows with them, but once you've uh, disabled this, they're pretty much, you want them to go on the walls. So if you were, if I were to build like a little tower out here, basically, I would close it off and I would put the uh, copper arrows inside of it. And I would have them use that. Uh, so they would basically come in here, they would go up into the tower, they would start firing all their wooden arrows off at the enemies to finish to using them up. And they'd be like, oh wait, we need more ammo. So they'd walk down here. Grab the, I mean, grab the copper bolts now to fill up their inventory that's in the uh, base of this thing. Go back up and start using that. Once the battle is over, you open up the doors, let them out. They'll have a few copper arrows left in their inventory in order to waste on training. Uh, which is a bit of a waste, but what can you do? But at the very least, they're not going to be wasting it all the time. So once they're all out, you relock the doors. Uh, or maybe you refill them first and then lock the doors. And then they go back down here and they'll train again. Now, that's why I have this little weird setup of doors here. Uh, basically what this is, is this is their main stockpile area for ammunition and food and drinks. Once they're in here, we're locking the doors. We're locking this door and we're locking this door and they're going to be in here, they're going to be staying in here. They're going to be sleeping, eating, uh, and training in here. This is the uh, archery targets. And that's all they're going to be doing. Alright, so let me, first things first. Let's uh, get them to get over here and make sure that they have their, uh, they get their equipment properly. So yeah, that is the main thing, is that you have to make sure that they have allowed 250 arrows, give or take, and that they will just go and do it themselves. Now, let's see, 10, so you would need, what is that? Oh god, now I'm trying to think there, and it's just not quite working out. Uh, basically, with ranged units, they will each carry up to a maximum of 20 bolts. 
uh, give or take, in their quiver. And that's about it. And then they will go and refill it after they're done using it up. Oh, looks like we got some caravans here, which I'm probably going to ignore. As this is not a, uh, this is not a fortress where I need to be trading. Okay, so they're gonna go in there, they're gonna grab their, all their clothes, they're gonna go grab some basic ammunition, and then they're gonna filter on back down here. I am your liaison from the mountain homes, please talk to me even though you don't want to. Okay, now this guy here should be fully equipped, so let's check him out. Uh, he's got his iron crossbow, he does have his padded leather hood, his leather armor, his leather helm, both of his gauntlets, both of his boots, his greaves, his quiver, and his cloak. Now, if I hit V on the quiver, V, enter on the quiver, I can see that he has 25 wooden bolts. So I guess he has uh, 25, he can carry 25 in there or something. I suppose, I suppose. So yeah, he can carry about a stack of bolts. Uh, that's why you want about, you know, make sure that you're giving them enough ammunition so that each of them can have, uh, or the whole squad enough ammunition, so that each of them can have 25, because it's 250 divided between each of the members. Uh, which is something I was always confused about when it came to the military. It's like, wait, am I giving 250 bolts to each dwarf? Is that 250 bolts for the entire squad? Uh, but yeah, that's 250 bolts for the entire squad. So yeah, that was one of the things I managed to resolve for that. Okay, so let's have them. Have them go down here. Now, I have the stockpile on the left set up here for a specific reason. Um... Each of these stockpiles in here is meant to carry the exact same stuff that's in here. The only difference is that this is the re the restock area, basically. Uh, when we're, say we're, you know, we have a thousand wooden bolts here for them to train with, and we're obviously going to go through that pretty damn quickly. Uh, so we, while they're training with that, we have our guys restock this area. That way these guys can't escape while all this is locked up. So they restock this area and then we close this door right here, lock it, open up this door. And each of these stockpiles is set to move, and, or I should say drop, uh, give to, cough, the other stockpiles. That way they will, once this opens up, uh, as long as these guys all have hauling, they'll run up here. They'll start grabbing all the stuff they need, dumping it in their stockpiles here, refilling it. And then we just relock the door, reopen this door, and... The process repeats. That way we keep them here and we can keep them training. Now, another thing you can do is if you want to remove the roof here and replace it with wood, uh, should technically class it as an outside area. That way they're training in the light and they won't get, uh, what's it called? Oh, God. They won't get tunnel adaption, basically, uh, which would uh, make it so that they, if they don't go out into the sun for a very long time, they, when they eventually do, they can get sick or even completely nauseous and start like puking all over the place if they go out into the sunlight. What the hell are you? You're a fisher. You're not supposed to be in there. Great. Now I have to wait for that guy to get out of there. Duh! So we can lock the damn doors. Finish picking on the conversation. Okay, so we have range 3, range leader, and range 1. So we're currently missing range 2. Get out of our bed chamber, you bastard! Here comes range two. Okay, now. We have this area pretty much designated for them, except for they're just going to eat and drink here. It's not really something that's designated out. Uh, we need to make this area a little bit of a barracks so that they will... There we go, go down to the Mirthful Rocks. Have them uh, store their equipment here. We don't need to have them train there. And next we have these archery targets. You can find them in B... Uh, B capital, whoop, not capital S, capital A. There we go, archery target. And you just place these down and build them out of whatever you want, honestly. Uh, after you're done that, you need to go to it and hit R for room. And uh, build it up to about here, give or take. Uh, you never want to have this overlapping another archery target, as that can cause problems. Okay. And then you can use WASD to tell them, okay, I want you to fire from the top down. So, A in order to shoot from the top to bottom. Uh, likewise, I tried to tell them to shoot from the bottom to the top, they would not be able to shoot the target, thus causing a little bit of an issue there. Uh, I need to then go down to them and tell them, oops, I hit R again, uh, tell them to train. And I go through, oh, nope, go throughout this and tell them to train, tell them to train, rinse, repeat. Now, I would lose, he would leave. There's a very interesting thing when it comes to actually training at this point. Because you know usually at this point we would go military, 
uh, schedule, and we'd have them train constantly, which I'm still going to do here, because that helps uh, as I uh, get them out of the, uh, as a what the hell, uh, fix them kind of uh, deal. So let's remove this. New order. Train. All four with a minimum of four. Sleep at need. And paste, copy paste it all the way down. Alright. Now. When you assign this, you know, schedule to your dwarves. And you have them activate it. Yeah, there we go. Finally he's out of here. Lock for mid passage. Yay. Okay. Um, they will not train properly. So, like usual, I would go military, alert, active training, and I would set them to train. Generally speaking, when you do this, they're not going to actually train. They're just going to stand here and be like, if you go to general, be like, we're going to archery practice. Har har! But they're going to stand here and they're not going to do anything. They're just going to freeze here. Uh, for some reason, you can't have them training on a schedule when it comes to archery. You need to have them as inactive with nothing else to do. So let's go to military, active training, or, act, or, tra or training, alerts, and ha set them to inactive. And now when we set them to inactive, oh look, they're going and training. What is this? What is this? So by having them inactive, they should train. If they're ever not training, you can just toggle that. So military alert, toggle it on, toggle it off, and then they'll get back to training. And they'll do this constantly. Now you can see I've also channeled behind it. I'm not actually 100% sure about how much this actually works. It's supposed to, but I haven't seen it actually function in a while. Basically, if you channel behind your target, uh, arrows that miss are supposed to fall down and uh, be collectible so that you can actually reuse them. But, you know, haven't really seen that happen. So they're going to sit here now. They're going to train like this for a while. And they'll use up their ammunition. They'll go grab new stuff. They'll eat. They'll drink. They'll sleep. All that good stuff. Which is the... Uh, this is the one major, the main way, I guess you could say, to train your guys, to have them just use wooden bolts on the archery targets and repeat and repeat and repeat and just keep doing that. And that's the slowest way to train them up. Uh, one of the easier ways to have them train this is to have them, actually, have I set this up completely? I don't think I have. Is to have them train on live targets, which is why I've set up these little, little walls right here with some cage traps at the end of it. I think I've probably caught more by this point. Yeah, I've caught some more wolves and a nymph. Uh, and right here, this is in order to facilitate live targeting or live target practice. So in order to do that, if I start scrolling down throughout the layers here, you'll see that I've set up this little bit of, uh, you know, shoot throughable wall here. So, or what it called, uh, fortification wall. So they can actually shoot through this here. Uh, with a little bridge here to shut this area off and a door to keep them from fleeing out into the fortress. Uh, now I believe I've, have I hooked these up completely yet? Let me double check here quickly. They may have been lazy about it. Nope, still have to hook up one more. So in order to have that, uh, in order to do that, you want to trap a, trap an animal, build a uh, animal stockpile for them here, and that will have them, that will store them there. Uh, once you've done that, you go on down to, I haven't actually set a hockey for this, so capital H, F3, Zoom here. There we go. Uh, once you've done that, you want to hit B, build, for, and then J for cage. Uh, hit enter to build it here. And oops, did it cancel it out? It did. Whoops, I want to cancel that. Build, J, enter. And then you'll have a choice here. Copper cage, wooden cage. Well, which one has my animals? Uh, if you hit V, or not V, uh, X is what it is. Expand and contract. You will get the specific cages and what's inside of it. So let's put let's put the nymph in here as revenge for you know causing us problems in the beginning and you know causing us to not be able to quickly set this up. So I'll have them set up the nymph cage in there. So they will uh, my my guys will haul it down there. They'll set it up, and then this guy right here, the uh, mechanic, will go in and start to actually. What the hell are you doing down here? Oh, he has no job, so he's lazing around, I guess. Actually, you know what? A good thing to do for this... Ooh, I just thought... Why did I not think of that before? Let's go military scheduling for them. Uh, if you do set it up in this fashion, you can have them instead... Let me set up a new... Uh, 
new burrow with W. Let's go enter. Hit N to name it. Let's just call it... We'll call it the shooting range. And then we're going to designate it right here. Okay. Now we can go military. Scheduling. Instead of having them train, new order, we'll have them defend Burrow the shooting range. That way we can enable that. They'll go grab their wooden arrows. They'll come down here and they'll start firing at these guys with a minimum of four. That way when they're inactive, they'll be training. When they're active, they'll be down here shooting at the enemies and getting uh, faster skills that way. All right, so he's bringing the cage now. Once he gets the cage down here, we will tell our guy to uh, go link it to the lever. So once we've pulled that lever, they will automatically uh, release all of these animals. Now this is good to do it as soon as you can because some animals uh, or some critters will eventually starve to death. I think it's mostly the goblins and orcs and stuff like that. You know, our, the invaders typically. Uh, okay, so let's go here. Link to cage, link to nymph cage, to mechanisms. All right. So you can see, even all this time here, they're still really, really slow at uh, training this. But that is the uh, more, more I would almost say legitimate way to do it. Even though it's this is technically not cheating. It's just taking advantage of a game aspect. Uh, but still, it's pretty cheap. <laughs> pretty cheap way to get instant military. Okay. See, they have stopped training now. They won't actually go pick up any more ammunition. That's the problem. Uh, with them. They'll use up their ammunition, then they'll stop. So that's why you have to go, you know, let's have them station up, go grab some more ammo. And then... Then go back to work. So yeah, eventually when they're out of ammunition, they'll tend to stop and, you know, kind of just stand around doing nothing. Uh, eventually they will go and grab the ammunition and continue training, but it takes a while at times. It's better to station them and have them go get some ammunition. Oh, we got winter. All the water's freezing over. Ooh, crap. That's going to create a, uh, a gap right here. Which I should probably plug. There we go. All right. Don't want no gaps in my wall. No sure, no how. Of course, that's also going to create gaps in my trap walls because they're using the water as an advantage for them. But whatever, this is winter, we're good right now. Alright, so they're stationed up here. They are not actually equipping their... Oh no, they equipped some ammo. They did. So that has them equip ammo quickly, you station them, and then you let them go. So this is something you'll have to do very often with them to make sure that they actually will do their job. Alright, let's see if this guy has linked this up yet. And he did. Okay, so we will pull... Wait, which one is this? This is the other lever. Okay, so I'll pull this one. Which should uh, seal that off. It's now completely sealed. We'll go... Military alert. Nope. Alert, not schedule. We'll put these guys on active training. He grew attached to his iron round shield. I'm not against that. You can see they have all filed in here now. So now that they've filed in here, we're going to go up here. And we're going to pull this lever, which is going to release all those animals into our little shooting range. And they're going to start firing. They can't get through these walls because none of these guys have any uh, any ranged attacks. Again, it's good to make sure that they don't have any ranged attacks. Uh, they can't get to our dwarves as they just basically start being shot at. So this is, this is the easy method of training them. Gives them a quick boost in between the, uh, you know... The other trainings that we're doing, so he's gone to get some more ammunition. He's going to come back and start firing again. So it's good to load up a lot of these. It's a little labor intensive to set it up because you have to keep setting up the cages down here and then having a mechanic set up two mechanisms to actually get it linked up. But you can see that it is... Let me click on these guys here. General. Uh, it's a lot better at uh, raising, their, raising their training. And if you were to actually... Uh, build something like a door back here and restrict them at a range you would actually reduce how how easily or how quickly they kill these guys because that way they're firing at them from a farther from a farther range the enemies can't escape 
and run around the firing range. So that's because, of course, the closer they are, the easier they are to hit. So if you can figure out, if you can find that op optimal range here, you can have them behind another wall so that they are just going to be, you know, targets. Come on, go for the nymph. She's annoying. Okay, Sasquatch is down. So this is a much better training for them because they're doing it really uh, more often and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, once you've gotten them to a certain level, they're able to shoot uh, beyond this little bit here. Usually you have to have them like right next to a uh, fortification or to have them shoot through. But once they get to a certain skill level, they can shoot farther away. Uh, so yeah, once you've achieved that, you're pretty damn good for a ranged military. You can build your towers, you can put them up on the walls, and they're going to be effective like that. Actually, another thing you could do, if you did want to have your dwarves, uh, you know, train, or if you did get something here that came into your fort, you know, an army or whatever that was that you needed to get your guys up there with, with the correct ammunition now, if you had it stored like I do, uh, you could simply move them down here, use, let them waste their ammunition on something, lock the door behind them, and then uh, unlock the uh, combat door and have them station, or the, uh, you know, actual copper, whatever type of ammunition you have, and have them get it, grab it, and bring it to the uh, front lines. And that is a good way to get that done. So yeah, that is pretty much uh, most of the aspects of the basic military, uh, basic military tutorial here. Uh, we set up the military squad, I showed the two ways to train them, I showed the two ways to train a range squad really, really well here. Uh, either by a shooting range type area or by actually letting them do their tar use the targets. Uh, either way, either way, you're going to train these guys really well this way and actually have them, you know, distinguish between their ammunition properly. And uh, hopefully this will help you solve some of the major issues with especially ranged military because I hate them so much at times. They have so many problems actually collecting their stuff. So as long as you make them collect the exact items and do not distinguish between metal and wooden types of ammunition, you know, training and combat types, that will alleviate a lot of the uh, Dwarf Fortress headaches with that, because that's what causes a lot of problems in this bit here. So hopefully, hopefully I've managed to answer all the uh, questions here properly. Hopefully I haven't missed anything. Let me see here. Issues with equipping, yada yada yada. So yeah, making sure that they have enough quivers, making sure that they have backpacks and everything like that. Especially, you have to make sure they have backpacks. It's almost a necessity for them as well. And so on and so forth. Equipping them uh, universally, making sure that they have exact match, not rough match. Uh, so that they do grab their correct armor and hold on to it properly. And that they have their uh, little barracks area set up where they can sleep and train properly. So really, um, get them their barracks, dug out, set up, equip your first guy, and get everything set up for the training of them. And then, yeah, there you go. You have yourself an effective military force. Of course, I could keep... Uh, oh, wait, why are you a novice axe dwarf? Oh, yeah, because he was uh, lumberjacking. Duh. Forgot about that. So yeah, that's the uh, that's the gist of it for the basic uh, military uh, tutorial for Dwarf Fortress. Uh, let's see if they actually did drop any down here. No, it doesn't look like they did. So I don't know the that used to work. It, I know I know for a fact that this used to work where it would drop the ammunition down, but it seems like it doesn't anymore for some reason. I don't know why. <coughs> Excuse me, pardon me. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much the absolute basics. Obviously, I did uh, cheat a bit in order to get all the equipment set up ready together for me. Uh, but you can, you know, arrange that all together yourselves. Just make sure that you have uh, one of each of the main armor pieces, two of each for the gauntlets and the and the boots. Uh, make sure that they uh, each have their own uh, weapon and shield uh, for the melee and just weapon and uh, quiver for the ranged. Uh, make sure that they all have it set up to be an exact match. Uh, when you do make your equipment, try and make sure that you do the exact equipment. Uh, even if you have one guy where you want him to equip certain things that you get over time, like a steel chest plate you happen to get, you can go into his equipment afterwards and individually do that. But generally speaking, you want to make sure you have something universal so that there's no issues with you know picking it up and such. And if you do let them go sieve, 
uh, make sure that nobody else is taking their stuff. Hopefully, uh, there was something that uh, I believe they repaired this where the dwarves were not storing their armor and weapons properly uh, when they did go off uh, off training or off uh, military. Uh, in the armor and weapon stands, they were preferring the uh, storage stockpiles instead, which caused issues with equipment. So hopefully now they should properly store it in the weapon and armor racks and get all that done. And again, once you have them all trained up like I do for these guys, uh, let's go over here and go uh, workshop profile. So capital P. And let's say, let's go down to our hammer lord. So we'll go hammer lords, leader. Next workbench. I like to do this one per per unit in the squad. Now I accidentally was lowering the uh, requirements for this. And you could also do it that way, make it so that the minimum requirement for a dwarf to train in here is like legendary, that way they'll do it properly. Anyway, Hammer Dwarf 1, and then finally the only one I have left is for Hammer Dwarf 2. So let's, uh, let's go military, let's alert have them go inactive and then we're gonna go over here and we're gonna have them work out and we're gonna put that on repeat and let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at our leader right now for this so I need to go over to attributes read dwarves find our leader okay so he's actually pretty damn good right now so we're not gonna get a good reading off of him so let's watch the uh, strength reading of H2 here so only at 43 right now so Hopefully they should get over there and start using that in a moment. They are collect. They did drop their armor there, so they are gonna just collect it and move it to the stockpile, as as they must. As they must. Okay, is that H2 working here? That's H1. Hopefully H2 will be in there in a momentarily. Come on, H2, where are you at, man? Oh well, let's take a look at H1 then. What does he have? Actually, where is he anyway? Am I blind or am I blind right now? I cannot see H1. Oh, there he is. Yeah, he's some pretty decent stats. So, 62, 62, and 24. We'll say 62, 62, and 24. So, we'll let that run for a minute while he works out on the bench. And we'll take a look at his stats and see if they change any. Now, I think that when it sparks like that, it only works on one at a time, not all of them. So, let's see here. Red dwarves. 62, 62, and 24. So he didn't raise his strength or any of those ones yet. So we'll let him keep going at this for a minute and see if he actually does increase that. But yeah, this is basically the end game. Once you have them train fairly well, you send them over here to perfect their skills. 62, 62, and 24. So they didn't change any. Hmm. That's still 43 as well for strength. Uh, it also does spiritual and kinetic sense. So it could be working on these, but I'm not really sure. But anyway, regardless, the workbench is supposed to raise those stats up, so that is how you would help uh, assist them afterwards in order to regain those and make them the most effective killing machines uh, possible. Uh, I should also mention, though, before I head out, that you can also assign your dwarves uh, dogs in order to uh, help them in combat uh, by going into... Uh, let me actually go V here. By going up to your guy and going into the inventory, no, is inventory, no, preferences, P, E for work animals, and then assigning a work animal to him. Now, once you've assigned a work animal to him, that animal is locked to him. So that animal will stay with him. Uh, now, the problem with, uh, with war dogs is that they will, I should have covered this aspect to begin with, I apologize, is that... They are effective, apparently, as a glitch in the game right now. They are affected by the civilian alerts. So if what usually happens is you get a you get an invasion. So you alert your civilians to get back to your home, which is your entire fortress burrowed. Uh, in a burrow, basically, where they will be, you know, protected. But this also affects the war dogs. So, as long well, when they're assigned to them. So the way to go around this is... If you want a war dog assigned to, say, Swords Dwarf 2, give him temporary training over the animals, or give him animal training, and have him specifically train that dog to be a war dog. If he does that, the dog will follow him as long as it is not attached or sent to be uh, attached to another dwarf. It will follow him automatically. 
So in that way, you can get your uh, get your melee dwarves to have their uh, war dogs without issues. Uh, likewise, for the ranged uh, guys, you want to give them hunting dogs, which have a uh, larger sight range. That way, you can actually use them to help spot enemies. If you turn them into hunters, I would give them a hunting dog to increase their spotting range, just in case any enemies pop up, and so on and so forth. So yeah, dogs are useful for that. Uh, anyway, that is it for now. Hopefully you've enjoyed this basic uh, military uh, tutorial. Hopefully we covered all the aspects of it. I did use pretty basic things. I didn't use javelin throwers or anything. Uh, oh yeah, I should mention that another one of the major things you can do uh, with uh, the ranged uh, dwarves, which you might want to do almost immediately if you can, is you can build workshop, go down to the uh, Fletcher's workshop. I believe that's the correct one. Can I build that quickly? Yes, I can. Uh, Fletcher, Fletcher's workshop. Blah, 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 blah. I might need a Boer's workshop eventually as well, so hopefully somebody will build that. And what the Fletcher's workshop allows you to do is you can take mechanisms and attach them to your crossbows and basically create repeating crossbows which fire faster. So that allows you to uh, get that done. Now, if you are working with research and you eventually get the uh, build workshop, uh, where's that? And you eventually unlock the, I guess it's in uh, furnaces here. The uh, Rock Forge, I believe it is. Uh, the Rock Forge allows you to build rock weapons and armor. So once you have the Rock Forge, you can build large, I think you can hopefully build large rock daggers, which would allow you to attach them to the uh, crossbow as a bayonet. Or you might be able to use other materials for that. But basically, in the Fletcher's Guild here, you can attach mechanisms to your crossbows to make them repeating, make them fire faster. And you can attach, uh, you know, daggers to the crossbow in order to make it a bayonet. But you need a crossbow for when, you know, they run in there and start bashing the doors like, I'm going to kill you with my crossbow! Ah! At least they'll do so effectively. And that would actually give you another, re a good reason to, uh, once you have them with that bayonet, to send them to the danger room as well and have them train in here. Because that way they'll block with the bayonet and gain skill in uh, bladed weaponry and such and be very effective that. So, you know, not only will they... Uh, shoot a goblin at a hundred yards and directly between the eyes five times with a crossbow but they'll also run up and uh, swing their crossbow and decapitate them in, in uh, half a second so yeah that is all the tips I have that I can think of at the moment uh, for the Masterwork Dwarf Fortress military tutorial if I do come up with anything else or if there are any other good comments in the, that people come up with I will mention them in annotations so Feel free to check for that, and we will see what happens. I guess I should open this up. Well, it doesn't matter now. So, yeah. Thank you for watching, everybody. Have yourselves a great one. And hopefully this military tutorial helps you out and helps you, you know, stay in this. Because literally when I had my issue with this, when I, when my Captain America dwarf died in the defense of the fortress over something so stupid as not picking up his longsword, I was yay close to just completely ending my series on it. After like hundreds and hundreds of hours almost the series, I, I was considering ending it. So hopefully this helps you guys avoid military frustrations as it has for me. Thanks for watching and peace out. Silver Dragon out.